finalists will be asked a single question. Uh, the question is really very simple. How do you affect the cannabis community? Yeah. Our judges will be uh, judging them based on their answers, uh, their, uh, their uh, parents, their total sexiness. Total sexiness. Uh, as the contestants uh, come up, they'll be asked to draw a number, and on the judge's ballot, there you will, that's, that contestant will be your corresponding number, okay? One to ten. Regardless, can I get a round of applause for all the contestants? <laughs> Being brave enough to give us ten pictures to plaster everywhere. In some By the of way, the most there embarrassing were positions. Seven entries, which is uh, an yeah. amazing accomplishment. So many sexy people. Yeah. All right, uh, let's start out with our our first uh, competitor, and this is in no specific order, so. Uh, Without further ado, uh, Boomer, come to the stage. Starting the top ten. Yeah. All right, Boomer, I want you to draw in, uh, a number out of the uh, box there. This will be the number uh, in which you'll be going in order answering no. questions. Number five. Number, number five. 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 Okay. Five. Boomer, yeah. number five. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Am I supposed to ask a question now? Oh, you're done. Later. I'm done? Yeah. Can I just talk sexy? You just give it up. I mean, you just give it up. Talk sexy, I like that. Hey. Just breathe into the okay. microphone. So, <sighs> I did push-ups earlier. Uh, just one, though. It's a push-up. It's a push-up. It's moving, yeah. Number five. Number five. All right. On to our contestant number two. Contestant number two, can I have Chris come on down? You might remember Chris used to work. There we go. Chris, will have you pick a number out of our wonderful magic box here, please? I love the cake. Magic box. And our number is. Number seven. Lucky seven. number seven. That's Chris C R I S. Next on our list, we have. Next on our list, uh, Katie Crotick. you get all contestants. Moving right along, can I get Madeline up on the stage, please? Hey. 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 All right, uh, I want to thank all of the, the, the activity and social media has been so terrific, and I thank everyone. All right. Get you to pick your lucky number here, please. Go ahead and yell your number into the microphone. Okay. I am number one. Number, number one. one. That's hey. Madeline. Is number one. Next cont oh, oh. Oh, yeah, oh. Next. Yeah. Next, oh. next contestant. I'm always first. <laughs> Charlotte. Woo! I hope I said that. I hope you guys can be louder than that, too. Can we try that again? Yes. Right in the eye. It's on video. Number four. Put that down. I'll take that. Thank you so much. Now our next contestant is going to be phoning in via a page for his question. His name is Cody, and we will be picking a number for him. Cody, Cody's a, a single dad from uh, Spokane, and we'll be uh, showing his, uh, his uh, video. Can I get one of you to go ahead and pick for Cody, please?
Cody is number six. Number six. Cody, K-O-D-E-Y. Moving right along. All right, the next contestant is Rose Leanne. Thank you all for who voted, too. There was a lot of votes in there. Thousands of votes. It's, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. 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 Number deuce. Two. Rose for number two. Thank you. All right. So, moving along. Can I get agent hashtag? Is there an agent hashtag? Yeah. She makes her own stickers. Drop one more I can. Lucky number one. Ten. Yeah. Lucky number ten. Thank you so much. That is Agent Hashtag. Oh, and uh, last but not least, Jen Moon Dancer. We got two more. Yeah. Not last, but. Second to last, but not least. Jen Moon Drum roll. She doesn't want to tell. Nine! Number nine. Yeah. Jen Moon Dancer. All right, we have a final And our contestant. final contestant. Can I get a round of applause for our final contestant and all of our other contestants? It's going to be Skittles tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no cheating, Primo. Alright, nice. There you go, girl. Yes. Okay. It's number. It is number eight. Number eight. There we go. And that's gonna be the order for our contestants tonight. We're gonna oh, all right, we're we're gonna we're gonna take about fifteen or twenty minutes. We're gonna bring our first five contestants to uh, solicit their response and then we'll take another break and we'll finish it out and the judges will decide. I just heard solicit. <laughs> <laughs> you like vacuums? <laughs> so, so get back in 15. You have 15 minutes to get as high as you possibly can to listen to these answers. Okay. Our contestants, you also have 15 minutes to go ahead and figure out your answer to the question. We're going to meet up again in about 15. We love you all. Thank you. If anybody's running low on extracts or concentrates and you need a little help with that, you can come to me and ask. i got multiple flavors down with sharing. Just to let you know. Much props, pretty much. Life of a 
don't catch it. Haters don't talk like mice in the head, so what that shit wants? Tell me you look at hard like missing the tight of rejection. You get you just blind to the facts, see the lies, it's just obvious cries from attention. You to the body, it's a black dude. Double just beans. On the full court, you can talk to me. It's going to shoot on your team and make us feel me on top. Even if I only have a bunch of freedom, you're giving me talk and you're watching me, but the people see I'm out. They can see I'm a cool motherfucker kicking the petty out with a tongue around my face. Peanut butter complexion to silly possession to beat us a bitch. I get some reapers and I'm raised to black Like a game of space Cut the bullshit these days was made For me to rise and be raised to pay Women freaking me crazy Look at me to a body graffiti Throwing their panties up on the stage I grew up on the edge The players in the shop You didn't do it now You were not gonna be late You rather know shit you thinking of The style of flow is a vocal kind of code To show you what the mic I be speaking of Words reading up Go to my crib No need to bring them ass to block Try not to pass the block Getting more hot than the ash Do not sip an ass to shot I ball cause I see all the rap a lot Let's keep party in the crowd to spot Then they hit me from a crew And I ain't even what was happening now Keep on holding me When I roll to be We can see the riding on the table Need to keep the time don't you know how to make it flow? Don't you know how to make now they keep a brother that only It's fine, get a close time, maybe a problem with skin and tech When it's in like Windex Give them up the ass like a brother on the cover of the whole check But it's like someone not having me Lay back so I can have a group So I see if I can have a fruit A big shout out to Ho, what's he think about me having you? She laugh at him, but that's a fruit Leaves around, smoke a tree to the leaves from them I shouldn't call it things he's in them Show them the people that be calling for you with the dance now Put your money where you want me to take You got the people that can't do the dance with the hand See a man who's C-A-D-I Never, never, open the scene always Second paper and tallways Fill them up for small ways Waiting for the whole to close I'm not supposed to be all day Pound day, pound day Let me know that's how I'm gonna run the Can I get all the judges to come back to their spots, please? Can I get all the judges? While we're waiting, all the judges, uh, Angie, are you out there somewhere? Yes, Angie, I want to, I want to say, uh, assume your thank position. You, Angie. Angie. There she is. All right. Angie uh, works really hard on Hopper Cannabis. All my judges. So I'm losing my voice. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone at Northwest Cannabis Club who did help me and was working alongside with me to make sure everyone and our contestants were happy. And I hope everyone's really happy with how it turned out. And I can't wait for the next one. Thank you, judges, for being here tonight as well. Um, <laughs> She's been doing a lot of stuff, a lot of our story posts. She's been out at all of our events making sure that the, the stories and the things stay updated for you guys. All right. We have all of our judges, right? All right. Let's move right along with our first contestant number one. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline Couture. And uh, hello, judges. Um, how do I affect the cannabis community? How do I affect our cannabis community? Um, what I bring to our cannabis community and how I affect us is by creating great programming like shit you can make when you bake. Um, coming soon, the Martha Stoner Show and a movie called Space Buds. Um, I'm here to make people laugh. Um, I look different and I use that difference. Um, and my strange ADHD abilities and cannabis to make people laugh. So, and if I don't have that, I've got a little sexiness too. Uh, that's how I affect our cannabis community. Thank you. Thanks for Can I go ahead and get contestant number two? What's the scale? One to five to ten? We're going to go one to ten. Sure. What's up, guys? One to ten. All right, so I'm empowering the cannabis community. We have a microphone. 
to get started, uh, I don't know how long and drawn out you want this. We'll try to make it as quick as I can. Um, I was a very, very, very sick child. I was given medication after medication from the doctors. Um, it literally destroyed me. It made me sicker and sicker and sicker. And I never tried weed, never tried a drug until I was 19 years old. I don't even consider weed a drug. It's totally cured everything for me. I have, I mean, seriously, I still have it, it's there, but I'm tolerable. I can go to work, I can come to these events. I can model, I can go to California and to my, and go do the things that I want to do that I'm passionate about. Um, so weed, in general, is just a huge thing to me. Working in the industry is even better. Um, I've started at Dean's Greens, I got them up and going um, through their medical to rec um, that I went to, who I've stuck by their side a year and a half, almost two years. Um, just loved every minute of it, was the who girl. I've been out here giving you guys free stuff, educating, stimulating your brains, getting you guys more and more education and more just understanding about terpenes, about weed, about what it does to us, what it can help us do. So I just think that I've been a huge help and uh, I just want to continue to do that for you guys. So, thank you. 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 And what do I do to affect the cannabis community? Um, I have been a pioneer since 2011, and I have worked with many different um, cannabis companies. I started with Five Zero Trees and became their general manager, and then I moved on to be Green Apple's general manager, and I now work for five companies. Um, I believe in cannabis unity. I'm really looking to rebuild the community, because when Recreational came in, um, all of the medical patients were left without growers and without resources. So I'm here to educate and support small brands. That's how I affect the community. All right. Thank you, Katie. Now, contestant number four, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlene, and um, how I affect the cannabis community is I am a community organizer for an online lifestyle community called Bone Baker. We're a support group for women and non-men who uh, use cannabis, and we use cannabis in commonality to uh, empower one another. Uh, we started in January with maybe a couple hundred, and now we're at 10,000. And... Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, we started with uh, mom groups, really, and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, you know mom shaming with if you're a cannabis user and a parent, and I am. And uh, we believe in uh, thank you. <laughs> we believe in responsible cannabis consumership, and that you know, normalizing cannabis use is really through mothers and women. And yeah, so we just hope to provide a space where people can feel empowered for that. And it's called an elevator. It's for women and non-men. And I'm Charlotte. So thank you. <laughs> Contestant number five, please. Hello. Hey, what's up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? What's up? Hey, you all look lovely. You guys are the real sexy people here, so I just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, I forgot what the question was, so I just wrote down a recipe for some weed brownies. <laughs> no, uh, so I feel like the way that I affect the cannabis community is negatively. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. That's Steve's what? joke. I was like, yeah. okay, all right, okay. Uh, no. I think actually that's what I do. I uh, not negatively. I think uh, what I do is I affect the cannabis community uh, by making people laugh, by hosting events and doing stuff like uh, bringing my dumb ass up here uh, to be all sexy. And pretty much, I feel like. Uh, one of the biggest ways, and, and uh, really for me, one of the biggest things, uh, the reasons why I do it is to break the stigma uh, that cannabis has. Medical, recreational, whether you do whatever with it. I don't care if you rub it on your skin, put it up your ass. Like, you have a right to do it however you want to. And whether it's you want to go up and do dabs and go and do some comedy, or you want to go and do dabs and, you know, make some coffee or take some photos or whatever. Like, you shouldn't be looked down upon that for doing that. You know, people go out and they get hammered. They get hammered, do all sorts of, do blow. What, if, I mean, I, hello, what's up? I said I do comedy, like, rail them up right now. The first time I saw a Nectar Collector, I was like, all right, that's the way we're doing dabs now. Let's, now we're on my, but that's not why. I, I like, I, <laughs> That's not why. I, I, so I could break the stigma, you guys. Like, that's one of the stupid ass things that I do. But so I could do it everywhere. Not just for the comedy people, not just for comics that are like, oh man, you're one of those weed comics. No. I don't fucking talk about weed in my comedy. I don't need to. I let my jokes talk about it. What I do do <laughs> is, uh, so stupid, so stupid. What I do, though, is I do hella dabs. And I'll smoke all the weed. I'll sell you some outside too to make your jokes fucking suck. Because I'm, I'm experienced. I'm experienced doing that. Since 2008, my homie LK, rest in peace, bro. This fucking hat. My homie right there, he got me in. He got my fucking little boot, my little comedy boot, into the cannabis scene when I was just a fucking toker, smoker, joker, barely doing comedy out of a coffee shop. He's like, hey, bro, come on in with his Grateful Dead pins and his derby hat. He's like, come on into the, this cannabis place. Uh, I won't we'll mention, but it was one of the first ones around here in 2008. And I hosted for four years every Saturday without pay, without even a fucking eighth of weed. I had to beg and like ask people for dabs, not like a fucking shark, but I had to ask people for dabs for four years. While I was booking and hosting a comedy show every Saturday, bringing people in, medical patients, so they could have a good time and enjoy a comedy scene where they could bring their ass down there and get high because there ain't no two bong rip minimum at no comedy club, you know? It's all two drink minimum because that's how they make their money is off the booze, you know? So I do shit like that. I was at fucking Plain James dealing with some drama bullshit. Oops, I don't, you're not supposed to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> When, when people were first starting to do recreational, it was like, sorry, this room doesn't exist to you because there's medibles in there and you can't have the hash in your joint because the hash is considered to concentrate now. And I know last week it wasn't, but I'm sorry, I gotta be the bad guy. My tip jar is here. <laughs> you know, you gotta deal with that stuff and dealing with it. I worked with Parents for Pot and a lot of different organizations to try and break these. I ran, my ass used to wear, I got a commemorative tattoo, bam, because that's what we do in Portland. I got a commemorative tattoo that I used to weigh 365 pounds. Yeah. And now I'm under, I'm not under 200 anymore. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, man. But I was under 200 and I dabbed every fucking mile and I am up to now, you guys, almost 600 fucking miles on my Nike Run app and I was dabbing every single mile of those and I ran the uh, half marathon shamrock run in my weed ties. Like, what? Hey, and I could pop it like that all night long in your dance club. Those are just different ways. And I coached youth football for third and fourth graders. I'm pretty sure all the parents knew that I dabbed before practice. But their kids had the best fucking time. And every day their kids come up to me at the drive-thru at my work and like, Coach, why aren't you coaching this year? I'm like, because I'm hot for canvas, bro. And that's what I gotta do. Wrapping it up. I can't, man. All right, uh, I, I, I want to just take a second and, uh, and just uh, interject uh, something from uh, someone uh, probably twice the age of most of you guys out there, okay?
Um, <laughs> sexiness and power and uh, personality and your, your personal spirit comes by um, creating honor and dignity and the things that you can look in the mirror and, and know that you're good and true to yourself. That to me is what makes a person sexy, no matter what shape, size, color. <laughs> What we'd like to do is we want to just continue with our contestants. We want to bring up contestant number six and let them go ahead. Let's just yeah! yeah, yeah. So contestant number six, are you ready? Oh, we're waiting for contestant. Oh, we're going to go to seven. That's, the six is going to be our last one. Okay. We'll take the video at last, okay? Um, All right. Number Okay, video, all right, number seven. Number seven. Lucky number well, we're waiting seven. for lucky number seven. October 20th, we have a glass pumpkin competition and live glass blowing demo. Over 15 artists and that, so make sure you're here. Give it up for contestant number seven. Is that better? Yeah, Alright, so I'm Chris, and how I affect the cannabis industry is I strive to be a higher class smoker. Um, I, we can't hear you. I, I strive to be a higher class smoker. Um, I am a single mother. Um, I started my journey in the cannabis industry when I was 18 years old. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Um, I had a lot of failed treatments, and I was told I'd never have children. And so my daughter is my miracle baby. <laughs> I used cannabis uh, to shrink my tumors, and I actually literally traveled the country from doctor to doctor to finally get the right surgery. Um, that's how I actually ended up back in Oregon. It's kind of funny, because this is where I was born. Um, as I finally found a surgeon in Lebanon, Oregon. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. <laughs> so I found a surgeon in Lebanon, Oregon, who was willing to do the procedure that I needed and was open to my use of cannabis. And uh, since then, I have used cannabis for almost every treatment that I've needed. Um, I've had to relearn to walk. I broke my back when I was eight years old, and it, it my where uh, this the broken portion of my spine is where they stuck the epidural, and so I was paralyzed uh, when my daughter was two uh, from the degrading of my spine, and I had to relearn to walk. And I instead of taking pain medicine, I started making all sorts of different medic medications with cannabis again and experimented with topicals and edibles and teas and other herbs. I also uh, now study a whole ton of different herbs and uh, I try to give them, I make stuff that I like and I try to give it away as much as possible. I don't sell anything that I make. Um, I had a business for a while but I actually didn't sell anything. <laughs> I just, that's, not how medicine works, in my opinion. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Can I get contestant number eight? Number eight. Yeah! Number eight. Yeah! 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 the cannabis community. I bring the essence of Skittles. And Skittles is more than just a girl with crazy hair and a cute boots and a loud personality and attitude. And most of you guys might not know this, but in December of last year, I moved to Portland. I did not know a single person in this entire state, but I came with a purse, a backpack, and two suitcases. And I said, holy shit, I'm gonna come sell some weed. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did not know what I was walking into. I did not know that it could rain for more than 14 days in a row. Welcome to Portland. I did not know that this was a real place. It is very, very true. I'm sorry, y'all, but Portland is not lying. You guys set it up, but I love you. So, what do I bring to this industry? I bring the spirit of perseverance. Y'all, coming out here by yourself on your own is harder than anything in the world. Because the world is against you. No one has your back when you're alone and you're like, how am I gonna pay my rent? How am I gonna make it? 
much we have to do. When I came here, all I had was enough money for my first and last month's rent and 200 bucks after I bought my ticket. And it was like, holy shit, girl, it's Portland. It's not like Atlanta where you got places where you can go. This is Portland, Oregon, in the middle of Oregon, on the West Coast, where your family is on the East Coast. Good luck. But I still came back. And you still have to keep pushing through. And I bring the story to inspire all of you in this room that no matter what the hell life says you can't do, you say, guess what? I can do it. And you watch me. I can take a piece of gum and a backpack and I'm going to make something amazing happen. Yeah. Because within us there is this essence of life and that we can achieve greatness. And I just want to inspire others to come out here, kick ass and take names and say, guess yeah. what life? Yeah. Sexiness is all about letting you know, when life knocks you down, you get right back up and say, bring it. I'm ready to go. Good night, y'all. Yeah. All right, contestant number nine, please. That's a good question. That's Skittles. How do you follow Skittles? Love you, girl. Um, so I'm Jen Moon, dancer for all of you who don't know. Hello, lovely judges. Um, so how do I affect, let me make sure I'm reading this correctly, the can cannabis community? So I just realized uh, this past June it had been six years since I was medically discharged from the Army. Um, and it was a real kind of aha moment because six years ago, I was in and out of the hospital having surgeries, multiple surgeries. I lost my ability to have kids. And I was getting medically discharged. What am I going to do for a career? I can't do anything. So I get out and I'm in pain. I'm in pain, but I work through school to get myself on my feet. And then a year after I was medically discharged, I was rear-ended by a garbage truck and slammed into a semi. Um, and I've had several surgeries since then, so it was just one after the other, and I left, lived with pain because I didn't like taking pills. And I did not know what cannabis could do for me until I moved here. And I, a good friend from when I was a child, if you all know her, uh, Laura, uh, Lauren LaFranc, she introduced me to the cannabis community here, and she showed me what strains I could use for my injuries as a veteran and how it's unique to the certain types of injuries you get and what strains you can use to help yourself feel better. I had no idea. I was living in pain for years, for years, to this day too. But when I started using cannabis, my life changed completely. As you can see, I'm back into dancing, which I haven't done in 10 years. Um, I used to be a professional hip hop dancer and I couldn't do it, and now I can dance again. So that's my biggest gift and uh, to be able to spread to other veterans that you can live a normal life without reoccurring uh, dreams or instances from times when you were in the military. You can live without that much pain and still get through your day. And as a female young veteran, I'd like to spread that around to anybody who needs help as a veteran. So that's how I have changed. All right, thank you, Jen. Uh, our last contestant, if you look over to uh, contestant number ten. Number ten on the uh, wait, no ten on the stage. Uh, yeah, we'll have to be quiet so we can hear it, but uh, go ahead when you're ready, Judge. Wait, what? Oh, what's good, everybody? This is Canada. Uh, I am so sorry I could not make it out there. I am really busy. These ladies need my attention. Oh, they need my attention all day. So, uh, to answer the question, what I do with the cannabis community, um, I think that I'm pretty particular um, when it comes to my life. Uh, I was raised in the Mormon church, so we was a uh, singular plant. You know, the devil's lettuce. And it was bad, and uh, it wasn't until I got out of the Marine Corps, um, until uh, 
I had some issues and had to deal with it, uh, and specifically using cannabis, I found out that uh, I had a completely wrong impression, and the way I was taught was completely inaccurate. And so what I do on a daily is I want to smash stereotypes, uh, you know, that, that pocket idea. I want to make sure people are educated, you know, I want to make sure that what I'm doing, um, I'm able to, uh, to explain to my children, you know, on a level that even though a society has a stigma on it, that my kids can hold their head up high and understand why I partake every single day. And so, you know, I want to further this and uh, make sure that people are educated. I want to keep on educating myself and and uh, partake daily and medicate. And uh, the last thing, I guess, uh, if, uh, one thing I could leave is with one impression is that uh, the slacker shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, you guys are, uh, you take four or five ice cream sandwiches, throw it in a blender with like two cups of milk, blend that stuff up, it's called a slacker shit. You guys love me for that. Thank you. Round of applause, please. We're going to have our last contestant come on the stage. All right, our number 10. Hi guys, I'm Asia Hashtag. Um, I affect the cannabis community. Um, I've been a medical patient since 2015. Um, I am also a bed tender and inventory specialist at Top Shelf Buds here in Milwaukee. And um, I feel like I educate patients on a daily basis when I'm bud tending for them. Um, I also try to attend all of the um, industry events that happen in our wonderful city of Portland. Um, I also review a lot of products for the industry um, for different companies and um, such as Candy Friends that was here a couple weeks ago. Um, um, I have uh, over 2,000 followers on my Instagram, um, which is based um, on the cannabis community as well. Um, I also took home second place at the Dow Warriors competition that was held here at the Cannabis Club earlier this year. And I also support a lot of local glass blowers. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Can we get a big round of applause for our competitors? Okay, uh, now we're going to take a 10 minute break. Uh, our judges are tallying their score. Uh, we're going to uh, announce a first place winner, second and third place winner. And uh, all you contestants, all you top ten, uh, I want you to get together and decide our Miss Congeniality Award, okay? I hope you heard that right. The competitors, top ten, get together, and you guys decide the Miss Congeniality, or Mr. All right. Our Miss Congeniality Award, okay? Ready, break. So uh, I hope you're having fun with this. Uh, uh, we're having a great time. Uh, I wanted to take just a moment again and just tell you more about uh, uh, upcoming events for the holiday season. We have a, uh, a holiday charity ball. If you're an artist with, uh, willing to uh, donate a piece of art for our charity ball, I'd sure appreciate that. And uh, we'd be forever in your debt. So let's have a break. Uh, have a talk to Deb, and we'll be back together in a bit, okay? Can I get a huge round of applause for Mike for putting this on and having this strip of love for us? When the fuck is called dip on the ground, you got a hundred someone not lose around. No beat it boy, you should eat off the ground. You see them hats and they up on the ground. Wow. 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 Ready? Round of applause to None other than Boomer. Come on. Boomer. All right, Boomer. There you go. Uh, I'll give you this mic. Thank you. Oh, 
No, he took, the, he took a different mic. I'm just gonna give it to him. Just, you want that mic? In a couple minutes. You, you can have that mic and keep that mic and then I'll use this mic, mic. You guys, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll keep the trophy. To Yucky Terps. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mike. Oh my God, you love me! Yeah! Thank you guys so much. Look at that. Oh my God, I love this. It's a new dabber. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I appreciate this, you guys. Thank you. I don't know what to do now. Uh, let's smoke some more dabs. And let's no, let's smoke weed every day. All right, by the way, that, that award was given to him by the other hey, contestants, okay? Yeah. yeah, thank you guys. Right. Let's hear from Bill Murray. Oh, nice. All right, and that's the clam. Okay, let's go. All right, our, uh, our second runner-up. Okay, finishing in third place is uh, none other than Rose. Rose the end. Thank you guys. This is freaking awesome. Seriously, I couldn't have done it without any of you. Like, you guys are the ones who vote, right? I mean, God, this is crazy. Love you. I don't want to make it long. I love you. I love you. I love you. Woo! Uh, okay, Jensen, it's uh, your turn here, buddy. Jensen's on the mic. Second place. Can I get a running round of applause for... That means you start clapping now. Uh, for Skittles, please. Skittles, second place. I just want to thank everybody. A huge shout out to all my fraternity and sorority sisters back in Arkansas because I know y'all bombarded everyone's cell phones to vote for me. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Go Greek. And y'all have a good night. Yay! Are you guys ready for first place? Yeah! Let me tell you about our trophy here. Ooh. We have this beautiful handmade Trophy by Danny B. Glass. Wow. Yeah. He uh, didn't use a lathe on this. He busted this out, hand spun it. It's very nice. Fumed in gold. It's going to be placed on top of a wooden uh, plaque with a placard for the winner. So we will be taking it back after we get it to the winner. Um, but this is the beautiful piece donated by Danny B. Glass. Make sure you follow him. I'm going to give it to Mike, though, to announce first place. Can we get a round of applause for whoever that's going to be? All right. Uh, okay. Um, well, I guess, I guess I, you know, each day I work in the club, and uh, we work uh, very hard here. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a sole purpose in mind in uh, designing a, a model for clubs moving forward. I happen to believe that uh, private clubs will be the way that we, that we'll be able to preserve our uh, cannabis uh, tradition and our cannabis culture. I don't think anyone is going to allow us to do that. I think we're going to have to uh, take that and then defend it, just like we've done here. And with your, with the help of members like you, we'll keep defending what we're doing. Uh, we have a we have a three year anniversary coming up this year. Uh, So I want, to, I want to say thank you again to everyone. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, we hope this becomes a tradition that we can uh, do over and over again. It was great fun working with everyone. And um, uh, now I would like to uh, announce our winner. Okay. Um, without further ado, uh, our winner of Hot for Cannabis 2018 is uh, none other than our friend Boomer.
I'm not gonna open mouth kiss you. Uh, damn. I'm sorry I didn't wear my tights now. <sighs> you guys, damn, there is a lot hotter pieces of ass uh, out there that I voted for. Rose, I voted for you. Uh, and then Mike said that I could vote more than once, and I voted for me too. Uh, <laughs> y'all did it uh thank you guys so much um definitely gonna put this well wherever they said they're gonna take it from me from uh and put it but uh thank this this actually means a lot you guys because i've been <laughs> given so much shit about that ad, not that ass that's a nice ass uh, how did they not win uh dang uh sorry i saw all these pictures online uh, but thank you guys so much. This really means a lot to me as an uncle, as a coach, as a wee barista, and like uh, just someone that is in the community and loves every single one of every single one of you guys, no matter what you do, whether it's make your jewelry, tell your jokes, do your photography, do your dabs, walk around with your pizza boxes, even though they're all shredded and nasty, and but inside they have delicious gold that I'm never able to be able to afford. But maybe I can trade this in. Where's Outdoor Phil? Outdoor Phil! This one's for you, bro! Literally, like, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. But actually, Danny B, this one's from you, bro! I love that little guy. He's such a sweet rainbow heart gem of magic, glass blowing sweetness. And if somebody's capturing this, tag him. Tag him, man. And Danny B's out there on the road doing his thing, collaborating with people. And I respect that because that's what I would want to be doing. And that's what I do want to do with all of you guys. So invite me, tag me, fuck me, love me, hate me. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, let's do it, and let's do it together, and one love, love you guys. Kiwi, I'm sorry you're not here, man, and you got some false people trying to be you. Kiwi, this one's for you, bro. One love, uh, one tribe, one vibe. Uh, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Cannabis Club, you guys are the best. Mike, thank you so much. Yucky Turks, I love you. Did you guys all have fun? You think we should do this again? Thank you, everyone. Uh, our best to Kiwi. We hope he's feeling well soon. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great night. See a Halloween costume party. We love you all. Let's get high. I bet you guys can't hotbox this room. I bet we can. Don't turn on the fan.